بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إننا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم وغير المغوب عليهم ولا المالين History of the Saints of the Golden Chain Number 33 Khas Muhammad Ash-Shirawani I weep and he makes me happy I become sober and he makes me drunk I am rescued and he drowns me One time he befriends me another time he lifts me Another time, he fights me until I become angry. One time, I am playful with him. One time, I accompany him. Another time, I avoid him. Another time, I speak to him. If you say he is happy, you will find him angry. Or if you say he is obligated, you will find he decides. Abdul Karim Jili He was the wisest scholar of his time, adorned with the arts of science, dressed in the robes of piety and patience, enlightened with the essence of certainty, and supported with the firmness of faith. He knew truth from falsehood. He was unsurpassed in eloquence and clarification, he was a master of this way and the first in this group. He was the champion of the knowers and the signpost for the seekers. His speeches were exemplary and exquisite in their eloquence. His proofs and examples were metaphors that clarified elevated concepts to make them accessible to the people. All were overwhelmed by his eloquence. If he passed through a city in Dakhistan, the people would line the streets to see him. Writers used to attend his group for the sake of his eloquence, jurists for his legal rulings, philosophers for his logic, speakers for his clarity, and Sufis for his manifestation of the truth. He was born in Kolal, a district of Shirwan, south of Dakhistan, on the 1st of Muharram, a Monday in the year of 1201 Hijra, 1786 current era. He was tall and very fair. His beard was of mixed color, black and white. His eyes were black. His voice was high-pitched. He was one of the pious jurists, following and teaching the Shafi'i school of divine law. He memorized Imam Shafi'i's Kitab al-Um, the mother of books. He was able to give judicial decisions at the age of twenty. He was respected by all in his city. He received his first teachings in Sufism from his family. From his sayings Our way is controlled by the Qur'an and the Sunnah. I have met four types from the Naqshbandi order, and of each type thirty perfect exemplars. But in the end, I chose to follow Sheikh Ismail Ash-Shirwani. God did not send anything to this earth except as a lesson for his servants to learn from. They asked him, Who is the knower? He answered, The knower is the one who knows your secret without you even speaking. We did not take Sufism through speeches and flashy words or by saying, Our sheikh is this and our sheikh is that. We took Sufism by being hungry, by leaving attachment to this world behind, 
and by disconnecting ourselves from reliance upon creatures. He was asked, What is the difference between the seeker and the sought? He replied, The seeker is the one who acquired knowledge through his activities and his learning. The sought is the one who receives knowledge through inspiration. The seekers move and walk, but the sought flies. And what a great difference between the one who walks and the one who flies. Sincerity between God and his servant is not witnessed by anyone, neither the angels to write it, nor the devil to corrupt it, nor desire to destroy it. Even the trustworthy changes his opinion more than forty times during a single night, although he is trustworthy. The witness, however, is firm in his view for forty years. The one who is in the state of witnessing of the Divine Presence sees reality. He will achieve the three stages of witnessing, knowledge of certainty, vision of certainty, reality of certainty. The knowledge that he attains will be received directly from the Divine Presence, which never changes. Therefore the people of witnessing are firm in their decisions, which come from reality and not from the opinion of the mind. A person cannot be called a wise servant until nothing appears in him that God dislikes. The Nakshabandi Sufi order is based on four rules of behavior. Do not speak except when asked. Do not eat except when weak with hunger. Do not sleep except when overcome by fatigue. And do not keep quiet when you are in His presence, i.e. ask incessantly from God. The purity of the heart depends on the purity of the dhikr, and the dhikr's purity depends on the absence of any hidden worship of another with God. The speech of prophets is from the Divine Presence. The speech of Sufis is from witnessing. The path of the Sufi to God is by struggling against the Self. The state of unique and sincere oneness is reached when the servant goes back from the end to the beginning and becomes as he was before he existed. The knowledge of oneness has been veiled from the eyes of external scholars for a long time. They can only talk about its outer shape. What causes the heart to feel happiness and peace when it hears a beautiful sound? It is a consequence of God's having spoken to the spirits when they were atoms in His presence and having asked them, Am I not your Lord? The sweetness of His speech becomes imprinted on them. Thus, in this world, whenever the heart hears anything of zikr or music, it experiences happiness and peace because these are a reflection of that sweetness. About his miracles For twenty years he did not eat except once a week. His daily practice of remembrance consisted of 350 cycles of prayer. Sheikh Ahmad al-Kawakasi said, one time I was travelling from a city across the forest to another city on important business. On my way, snow was falling heavily and a great wind was blowing. The snowfall cleared and in its stead rain poured down, making all the roads like rivers. I had no choice but to pass through that forest. I entered it as night was approaching and got lost in the middle. The skies were pouring rain, night was overtaking me, the flood was increasing, and I did not know which way to go. I came to a river running through the woods. 
The flood made that river like an ocean full of waves. The bridge over it was wrecked, but I had to cross. The river was raging, rising higher and higher, until it reached up the legs of my horse to my legs. I feared drowning for myself and my horse. I raised my hands and I asked my Lord, O、oh、Lord, help me in this difficulty. Immediately I heard a voice behind me saying, O、oh、Ahmed, why are you calling me and bringing me from my house? I looked and I saw Sheikh Khas Muhammad behind me, but he was huge. He said, Hold my hand and cross the river with me. I felt fear. He said, When you are with us, you must not feel fear. Then we crossed the river. He walked on the river, and I was walking with him on the water. We crossed to the other side. He said, Now you are safe, and he disappeared. When I reached my destination and went to the mosque, I saw him sitting there. I asked, How did you come? He said, O、oh, Ahmed, for us there are no boundaries. We can be anywhere and everywhere at any time. Gamar in Muslim Resistance to the Tsar, Shamil and the Conquest of Chechnya and Dakhistan, has this to say about Sheikh Khas Muhammad. The seed sown by Sheikh Ismail found a fertile ground in Dakhistan, where it was transferred by another of his disciples, Al Sheikh Khas Muhammad Al Shirwani. He ordained Al Sheikh Muhammad Al Yarahi, who in turn ordained Jamaluddin Al Khazi Khamuki. Benningson and Wimbush describe the influence of Sheikh Ismail Ashirwani and his caliphs in Dakhistan in this way. The Naqshbandi order was to play a very important role in Caucasian history. Iron discipline, total dedication to its ideals, and the strict hierarchy on which it was based explain the epic resistance of the Caucasian mountaineers to Russian conquest. A resistance that lasted from 1824 to 1855, in which not only all the leaders of the movement, but also the local authorities, naibs, and the majority of the fighters were Naqshbandis. It can be said that the nearly 50-year-long Caucasian wars made an important contribution to the material and moral ruin of the Tsarist Empire. And hastened the downfall of the Russian monarchy. The Brotherhood achieved another deep and long-lasting result. It transformed the half-pagan mountaineers into strict Orthodox Muslims, and introduced Islam into the animist areas of Upper Chechnya, and among the Circassian tribes of the Western Caucasus. The subsequent massive migration of the Caucasian Muslims to Turkey did not destroy the Naqshbandiya in Dakhistan and Chechnya; its roots had spread too wide and too deep. Sheikh Khas Muhammad died on the third of Ramadan, a Sunday, in the year twelve hundred and sixty Hijra, eighteen forty-four current era. While returning to Dakhistan from pilgrimage to Mecca, he was buried in Damascus. He passed the authority of the order to his successor, Sheikh Muhammad Afendi Al Yarahi, according to the will of their common Sheikh, Ismail Ashirwani.